Hello and welcome to video two of the Endocrine System PowerPoint screencast series. Uh, so here we're going to start talking about the actual glands and I'll do a few glands at a time usually to keep it short. Uh, so the hypothalamus is where it all starts off. You may remember the hypothalamus from ANP1 as being a part of the brain, which it is, but it also has an endocrine function. So as I foreshadowed there are organs that are not strictly endocrine that produce uh, hormones, this being one of them. The uh, hypothalamus uh, produces a lot of things that we're not going to talk specifically about. Lots of what they call inhibiting and releasing hormones, like gonadotropin releasing hormone. And uh, oh, there's a big list. Sorry, I can't think of it a bunch. Um, but in any case, the hypothalamus is connected to the pituitary by this little thing called an infundibulum. Now I'm gonna draw over here. So there's this little stalk there, and you'll see better on the next slide, that's called the infundibulum, and you have an anterior pituitary and a posterior pituitary. So one's in front and one's in back. Now the hypothalamus secretes a bunch of stuff that it produces into that posterior pituitary. The posterior pituitary has a proper name that you have to know. It's called the neurohypothesis. And uh, it's technically part of the hypothalamus, but we're going to consider it as part of the pituitary uh, for uh, our purposes. Now, oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone are produced and secreted into that posterior pituitary. See this term down here, uh, vasopressin. We're not going to deal with that one down here in the right. Uh, that's just a kind of a, you'll see it, but I'm going to use antidiuretic hormone because it's more descriptive and will suit our purposes better. Now, here's a big mouthful. The hypothalamic hypophyseal tract is the tract that goes from the hypothalamus to the posterior pituitary. All right, now let's get on to the, uh, to the parts of the pituitary itself. Um, no, 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 no. Hold on one second. I'm getting rid of that. So the neurohypothesis, I will generally call it that. It's for store, it stores and releases hormones only. There's if somebody, maybe me, gives you a trick question that says, uh, which hormones are produced by the neurohypothesis? The answer is none. They don't, it doesn't produce any. It stores them and releases them uh, or secretes them. So here they are, oxytocin. This uh, is usually thought of as targeting the uterus. That's kind of the main thing that you think of. And it causes uterine contractions. But as mentioned in the previous screencast, it also causes milk ejection uh, after pregnancy. It also... Uh, encourages snuggling and bonding. Whenever you uh, snuggle with your sweetie pie, you're going to actually produce oxytocin, which gives you a comforting feeling and reinforces that sort of behavior. When you pet your dog, you and your dog both get oxytocin dumps. That's pretty cool, huh? So go snuggle with your doggy. Uh, Antidiuretic hormone uh, targets the kidneys uh, and blood vessels. The kidney function is why we call it antidiuretic hormone. It, it, it is against diuresis. Diuresis is water loss. So antidiuretic means reduces water loss. So it, and when we get to the, re, the uh, urinary system, we'll go into more detail. Uh, and the vasopressin name is uh, for uh, uh, blood vessel constriction. So it keeps your blood pressure up. And here's a little diagram of both the hypothalamus on top there and the posterior pituitary in color. And you can see the hypothalamic hypophyseal tract. Uh, let me see if I can't point it out better. You can see that hypophyseal, sorry, hypothalamic hypophyseal tract right there. Uh, this is the storage container. Next. Uh, the adenohypophysis or anterior pituitary. Uh, this is a gland, a uh, proper gland, because it does produce its own hormones. And here is a list of six, yes, six hormones that you have to know. Uh, I've tried to be consistent in my uh, symbolism here where if I feel like you, like the word is, a, like there's a gland, I put glands in orange and I put a, uh, hormones in blue, and I think I'm pretty consistent on this uh, in this chapter, but bear with me. So you do have to know the full names. I've put abbreviations when they're around, and you can 
you do have to know the full names, all right? But the, it's easier to write down abbreviations for yourself. Try to say these words too, because you can learn to, you know, use them in a sentence and write them, spell them if you say them. So even ones that look really hard, like here, and you might, when you see that word, you might just go, uh, you know, and just kind of blur through it and not pay attention to it, but just break it down. You, you can actually improve your knowledge of this uh, scientific terminology by, by mixing in some effort. Adrenocorticotropic hormone. Adrenocorticotropic hormone. Not too bad, right? Others are easier. Growth hormone. All right, so let's just quickly go through them. Growth hormone, you might have heard of it as HGH, human growth hormone, but we're humans, so just call it growth hormone. It uh, really targets a lot of cells and it helps you grow. So this is a hormone that you produce uh, in large amounts when you're growing up and it kind of peters off there as you reach adulthood. Thyroid stimulating hormone does exactly what it says, stimulates the thyroid to produce and release its hormone, thyroid hormone, or one of its hormones, thyroid hormone. Adrenocorticotropic hormone. Now this one, you can break down the word too. That's another reason you want to know it. Adreno, adrenal gland, cortico, cortex, tropic, uh, sort of encouraging, stimulating. So this hormone targets the adrenal cortex, uh, and it specifically stimulates the release of glucocorticoids and gonadocorticoids, which we'll get to when we get to the cort to the uh, adrenal gland. Follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone both target the gonads. Gonads is just a fancy way to say uh, um, ovaries and testes. It's also a way to cheer on your team if your team's name is the NADS. Yes, that was a joke. So uh, what do they do? Well, follicle stimulating hormone stimulates specifically the the manufacture of uh, oocytes and spermatocytes, eggs and sperm. Luteinizing hormone kind of does a uh, accessory behavior. It's going to not specifically make the eggs and sperm develop, but it's going to uh, encourage production of, of hormones, which in turn aid in uh, fertilization and uh, pregnancy. We'll get to those. A lot of these are going to be gotten to in much greater detail when we get to the to the chapters that they deal with. So when we get to reproductive system, we'll deal with these guys in more detail. Prolactin, as I mentioned in the previous video, targets mammary glands uh, to produce milk. So prolactin causes you to produce milk. Uh, oxytocin causes you to uh, eject milk. And then this last figure here again shows the anterior pituitary with some details. Um, if I don't go over it, you're not going to have to know it. Like, don't worry about your primary capillary plexus or anything down there like that. Like these words, uh, you know, forget about it. So I'm going to, you, you guys will have some notes that I've print that I'll send you as a document. Use those notes, use this, these bullet point type things here, uh, in these PowerPoint screencasts like this. Uh, if you can learn all this stuff, and uh, you know ancillary material from the notes and read your book to clarify confusion uh, you should be good all right so that's video two stay tuned